Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by Daisy Jones and the six star Camilla Marone, who plays Camilla Alvarez on the Amazon Prime video series. Uh, Camilla, I was reading an interview that you had done and you said you binge the novel before going in to discuss playing Camilla. And I guess like when you were doing that, like what did what stood out to you about her as a character in that quick amount of time uh, that you were really excited about kind of exploring in the show? Well, I want to say that I accidentally binged. I okay. went in like, oh, I should probably read the book for the show that I'm auditioning for beforehand. And then, you know, sometimes you just kind of like skim through it before an audition because you don't have time to read the whole novel and the audition came so fast. And then I sat down to read the book and I didn't get back up until I finished it. And I was like, how does how did I just get sucked sucked into this world? And I think that that's the beauty of, of this show. And that's like kind of what instantly attracted me to it is I think we all kind of feel sucked in and absorbed by this story and and by Taylor's storytelling and I think what stood out to me was kind of like the secret um hero the secret glue that keeps everything together is Camilla Dunn and I and I was initially attracted to, to the Daisy role I was like well that's probably really cool to play you know the drugs and sex and rock and roll and she's so cool and and then I was like but this character is really interesting and strong in a beautiful subdued way yeah I mean I don't think the show would really the, especially the relationship because of the way it's kind of structured it wouldn't work I don't think if, if Camilla wasn't like the way she is in the show and like the way you kind of play her at all. So I think like that is, it is definitely like the key character, even if it's not as flashy, like you said, it's like, like Daisy, she yeah. is like incredibly she's like important. Secret killer, secret killer. Secret she's killer. always there. She's always right. The whole story revolves around her in some capacity. So yeah. Right. What, I guess like, so what did you guys like, especially so like that Camille and Billy relationship obviously is so important to the show and, and so much of the Daisy and Billy relationship then kind of like uh, is, you know, viewed through that prism. So I guess like, how did you and Sam talk about like Camille and Billy and like work together to find that kind of like, yeah, kind of find their relationship together and like how you kind of talked about their bond, I guess. We were thrusted into this I mean, when we when we chemistry read at the time, we thought we were going to shoot in a week and then we shut down for the pandemic for two years. So at the time that we found Billy and, and we chemistry read, I was like, we need to hang out every day and we need to get to know each other. And I need to hear everything about you and we need to hear all your ideas. We need to pull references. We need to watch movies together. And I was like, you need to watch the doors. We could do this thing. We could do that thing. And um, over at the end of the day, Billy and I's chemistry Sam and I's chemistry it was just so kind of natural and organic and easy and that's kind of been my experience with everyone on the show is that we all just really like each other and we work very well together and so you know there were some building blocks talking about kind of our our backstory which is like the first thing that actors do is kind of talk about how long have we known each other and what's happened and we can create some kind of secrets between us of, of all things that only we know that are fun to play with but yeah, it was pretty effortless between Sam and I and honestly, all the other characters too. You have, you obviously have a background with like indie film, like um, your early roles and stuff have been that like, and this is such a, a massive uh, production seemingly. I feel like it's like just, it's just watching it. It felt like it was like huge, I guess. And certainly I'm sure it was for you too. How did that like, I guess, how did that kind of help you kind of center it or did that help you kind of like keep your performance grounded amid like the amount of spectacle that we're seeing in this show basically? I only really felt the scale of it, I think, when it came out. And it was on buses and billboards and people were stopping me in the street. And I was like, wait, my indie films aren't on buses and billboards. And, you know, I come kind of like, you know, having experience in, in the independent films that I've done that I love so much and are so special to me and and are my favorite kind of things to make. But then you, you get surprised by these beautiful projects that are you know bigger scale and that brings a whole other level of fun too and recognition and and um intimacy with people and I feel like I have instant friendships with all the people that I meet like you that are like you know I've just rewatched the finale and there's such an investment in the people that love this show that it's just 
it's so cool to 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 go outside and meet someone who's like oh my god I really love your tv show and I thought this was gonna happen and I love the book because of this so I don't know I just they're both so beautiful and in different ways and have brought totally different things to my life do you have like a like was there a moment where you're like you're saying like just from people being like oh man it's so good like was there like someone who or something where you were like oh wow that's really good I did not expect you know that to happen or like somebody being like oh I love this and I love your performance or whatever it was Yes, I I was on a plane flying to New York a couple of weeks ago and I went up to the pilot in the cockpit before we took off and I was like, excuse me, sir, is there going to be a lot of turbulence because I know there's a storm and he was like, are you Daisy, are you Camilla Dunn? Are you in Daisy Jones and the Six? And I was like, yeah, how do you know that? And he's like, because my wife and I have watched it twice. And he said, my, favorites, uh, my favorite song on the album is... Um, just forgot the name song one of the one of the big ones aurora or, or honeycomb or something and um yeah and he had showed me a spotify and it had like thousands of playbacks on it and then we facetimed his wife and she was all excited and she had seen the show twice so then you just get surprised in life and meet people like that who are like this is so cool that's really awesome what's what would be your what's your favorite what song have you like run into the ground from the album because i definitely have a honeycomb for me for sure i've just destroyed, played so many times Honeycomb would be like my my instinctual answer, but I actually really like the river and I actually really like two against three. And that's mm -hmm. kind of sadder and, and kind of more melancholic. But I have actually been playing the album because I wasn't around. The band is so tired of hearing these songs because they had to rehearse it for a year and a half and then play it for another year. But I wasn't around for band rehearsal and I wasn't in um those episodes so I, I wasn't in the scenes where they're playing so I'm not tired of the album I'm still listening to it it's really good it is really good I was like I said you're saying like before we, we started this I was saying I rewatched the the finale and your performance in that is incredible and there's so many great moments for, for Camilla and I guess like at the risk of just like kind of ticking them down I like you have this great scene obviously with Daisy that's like your last scene with her and I guess like I think there's a lot of ways that could go. And I think in a different show, maybe it would be a little more, I don't even know, like aggressive or like, you know, kind of like typical. And in this, I think it's just way more, the way it kind of plays out is more, for lack of a better word, like realistic or just like maybe like em even empathetic. I don't even know. But I guess like, how did you and Riley kind of talk about that and like where those two characters are in that last sequence? We see them together, I guess, on the show, though, you know, like whatever. But like, yeah, like how did you kind of like think about that and talk about that? I think that Riley and I just kept coming back to the fact that we just did not want to play this like two women fighting over a man. And I think that that was really important to us was that we had to keep the thing that brought us together, the thing that instantly united us, which was our love, respect and admiration for one another, even though, yes, there is this obstacle of a person that we both really love um, in the way of that. But it's never what it's about for these two women. And I think that they're able to see the best in each other. I think that they're able to admire the things that the other woman has that the other woman doesn't. And that's like a very beautiful, mature quality and that I you know, could only aspire to, to have handled it in the way that, that these two women handled their, their friendship. Yeah, and, the other, and then you have obviously a bunch of, a uh, couple of at least two really good scenes with uh, Sam, Billy uh, and, when I was just thinking of was in the hallway and, and then Daisy comes off the elevator, I guess. And uh, you have a great react. You have a great reaction. I think you have an incredible eye roll in there. Or just like you're so, your character is so frustrated at that point. It's really good. So that was like, Hey, that's like a really good moment for you. I'd say. And then I was just tired at that point. I was like, I have been so good for 10 episodes. I have let these guys get away with murder and I have had it. And it was fun for me because it was hard to like, you know, find my inner centered, confident woman all the time. I was like, I'm ready for Camilla Dunn to lose it. Really good. And then on the balcony, um, you I think she said something that's like, you know, like she didn't want the perfect marriage. She wanted like her marriage. And I found that like really kind of, it's so great. And it's like a great kind of thought, I think. And like a great viewpoint into the character in a way that maybe we haven't even seen like, like kind of before. And I guess like, yeah, like, how did you mm -hmm. think about that? And like, you know, like, how did you feel like that? How would you, how did you feel that she felt, I guess, there at that moment? It's funny because no one has brought up that quote. And I really love that quote. And I thought it really like represented her in a nutshell. And 
kind of what an awesome point of view that is to have to have on any sort of relationship, you know, and, and that's kind of the moment where she's saying, I wasn't even asking for too much. Like, I don't even, I don't even want this perfect unattainable thing. I just want it to be mine and my story to tell and my husband to share it with and our problems to go through. And I think that's just a testament to her like uh, unwavering loyalty, devotion, uh, commitment to her family, to to herself, to to staying true to what she knows in her heart, which is that that this is a good man and that he's worth fighting for and this marriage is worth fighting for and that people make mistakes. And I don't know, she's just got such a good point of view about about the whole thing. And she's forgiving in a way that isn't compromising of her own self. You never feel like she's a victim or you never say, oh, poor Camilla, she should have left or poor Camilla, she stuck with him. And and, and she really just, just makes every choice from like a very um, centered and confident place. Yeah, I, the, one of the things too, I think, and it's, I think it's the way and you play her and just obviously the way she, the character's written too, is that like, if if Camilla like feels this way about Billy, I think the audience then has to be like, oh, I guess Billy's not a total like asshole, right? Because exactly. like, she's like really good and like a yeah. really good kind of character and a strong character who you're like believing in. So if, if she's able to see something in him, then it helps the audience believe in him too, I guess a little bit, which yeah, I mean. It doesn't make it as simple as like, she should leave him. You right. know, I don't, I don't think it is, it's, it's like that. I think it's complicated and they're like, well, you know, she's got some, some good points and maybe people are worth fighting for and maybe people do learn and grow and maybe um, stick it out with them for the long run. If you feel like there is something that is, you know, worth is something that you see and connect to in that person that makes it worth it for you to, to kind of put up the good fight. You also have so so the the show and the, and the finale, like I said, and another just another great the the the, the shows for, for is the framing device of having it be like the documentary that obviously is being made by your uh, daughter on or on your character's daughter and stuff. And so you have that last great moment where uh, I just is like it's impo- like impossible to watch that like tearing up. And I was talking, I interviewed uh, Zinga Stewart uh, about this yes yesterday actually, and she was like, oh. That was such a great moment. And she said that you both worked so well together and to like kind of capture that moment. And I guess like, I'd love to hear from your perspective, like how you kind of like felt in that sequence, like shooting that last little monologue for Camilla, where she kind of like allow, like, you know, gives the permission for them to reconnect in some fashion, I guess. Yeah, that scene was really hard for me. And actually for Nzinga, she was crying, um, behind the camera after after I think one of the first takes I I had a whole pass at it and she was just weeping behind the camera and I and I was really really crying too and some scenes where I was some takes I was crying a lot more than what they ended up using and you know I just like what an incredible woman to be able to look back at your life to forgive to love to understand and also to like let go and bless this person who she loves so much to to rekindle if that's you know what his heart desires and what's going to make him happiest and I just think that that is the quality that keeps everybody coming back to Camilla and everyone loving Camilla is the fact that she has an ability to do what is um to know what's best for others even if it hurts her and and what's what's best um for the like the greater good even though it's really painful yeah and it's an incredible scene and i i love i just love your performance and was it for you i mean doing those like yeah like how did you feel like having to play her like how did you think about playing her older obviously and at that point in her life right like i mean like obviously through through her health crisis or you know all these different things that you have to think about like i guess like you don't have a lot of time obviously to like play that but you are playing that so i guess how did you kind of think about that well, that interview day was all condensed into the last day of shooting. Everyone wrapped, and then I stayed an extra day in New Orleans to to do that, um, which I was really happy to have the time because I was super nervous about tackling that, and I felt totally how how you're saying, like it's it's quite daunting to play the 50 year old version of yourself when you're only 23, right? Like your physicality is different, your voice is different, your hand gestures are different, mm-hmm. and um, also to not give away the fact that she's dying and she's got cancer and um I don't know that day was just very scary and hard and also all the emotional stuff of looking back at your life was condensed into it and then I thought well how am I going to feel when I look back at my life at 50 years old and and what am I going to be proud of and what am I going to regret and what am I going to wish I did differently and and so I don't know I like learned a lot by kind of her her reflection 
yeah do you have so like like you said like the show is i mean you plastered on like buses and stuff it's like in a huge thing i mean like i guess as an actor like whatever you like from this experience like what are you hoping to take away from for your like next things that you're gonna go forward with i guess i think this is just a testament to um trust my gut when i when i feel like i really want to play something um it's right for me and and uh when I get the opportunity to play something, to take it and to really just put everything I have into it and then let it go into the universe and hope for the best. And sometimes it hits like like Daisy hit and sometimes it won't. And it's okay because, you know, my intentions are in the right place and, and it's just the thing that I love to do most. So I would just take this experience. I'm soaking it all in. I've been soaking it all in and then just go and, and find the next thing. Yeah, it's, it's a great, it's really a great performance, I think. And I, like you have, it's the, I feel like it's a character that fans really loved and you, you like kind of maybe exceeded uh, their expectations with like, I think it's like really good. I think, I think so. So uh, Daisy Jones, the sixth star. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, Camilla Marone, uh, thank you so much for doing this. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was nice to meet you.